During its run, Fast and Loud was one of the most influential TV programs on automobiles worldwide. With 16 seasons and over 170 episodes, the television program lasted for more than 10 years. Millions of people watched it on Discover Channel throughout its airing, but the project was abruptly canceled in 2021. The primary cause of the show's viewers' dissatisfaction was their ignorance about the reason for its termination. However, there were other factors as well. Since Discovery never provided a strong enough reason to end, its future remained a question. Come along as we go deeper today to uncover the true cause for the conclusion of Fast and Loud. Richard Rawlings revealed something shocking in a December 2020 interview with Joe Rogan, host of Fast and Loud. The bombshell was straightforward. He was leaving the Discovery Channel and there would be no more Fast and Loud episodes. Even Joe Rogan, who had never heard of it before, was taken aback by the news. The majority of people were in fact just recently informed via that podcast of the show's demise. It was an unexpected conclusion to a program that had begun some eight years earlier. In June 2012, the show's first episode aired on Discovery. Following the success of the first episode, the program ran for 16 seasons, 150 episodes, and eight years. Although many had great hopes that Rawlings would return for the 17th season, Richard made it clear on the radio program that he would not be coming back anytime soon. It took me some time to fully understand the program as it is now. Initially, Rawlings said that he had left Discovery and was no longer with the company. Despite a prominent disclaimer, it was unclear whether the program was still in operation. Without Rawlings, it would be weird to see Fast and Loud. But it is still possible, right? We are speaking about TV series that have skillfully switched over who their primary characters are throughout the course of the series. In Fast and Loud, Rawlings was the primary character, possibly the only one. It seems that Rawlings' creative vision served as the play's primary inspiration. Without him, it would not have been possible. This implied that the program would conclude with him after he left Discovery and became an independent contractor. It also prompts an intriguing question. What made Rawlings quit from Discovery? Did any of the guests feel anger against one another? Are they reluctant to sign a new contract since their current one has expired? Things got really heated on the show when Joe Rogan asked Rawlings this question. Initially, Rawlings said that he quit Discovery to go internally, widen his perspective, and change his direction in life. That seems like common sense, don't you think? Most individuals prefer not to commit a lot of time at a time to one job, particularly performers. In the end, people often become tired and decide to pursue more interesting pursuits, which seems to be Rawlings' circumstance in this case. It seems sense that he would want to look at independent company options given that his contract with Discovery is set to expire in more than five years. It wouldn't be so horrible if someone was logical. Despite Rawlings' relative youth, the effects of people's insatiable curiosity and adventure are well recognized. It makes sense for him to try to learn as much as he can about the work, as he is still capable of doing other jobs. As the discussion went on, however, we began to wonder whether this was the whole story. First things, Rawlings said that he gave up everything when he signed his contract with Discovery at the start of the program. He did, in fact, give up using social media and all other media. This implies that he would need the help of his whole camera team only to upload a simple picture of a vehicle to Instagram. Perhaps it didn't matter 10 years ago, as social media was less widespread. Facebook is used by people, However, it wasn't particularly helpful for daily tasks. Honestly, all you do on Facebook is make fun of the cat memes that your college buddy shared and make out with someone you went to school with. According to Rawlings, it explains why it is. Even though he first believed social media to be unimportant, as time went on and its significance increased, it began to seem like a bad choice. Rogan also offered anything to Rawlings. Given that he claimed to have pushed Discovery to give up those rights in the past, but they had refused, it seems that Rawlings knew it was a bad move. The fact that Rogan asked Rawlings about his ties to the Discovery executives was another indication that there could be more to this tale than meets the eye. It was clear that Rawlings was extremely unwilling to provide that knowledge. He eventually accepted 
after intense questioning by Rogan that he was under contract to keep his employment at Discovery a secret. In actuality, there was a $25,000 fine for every instance. Even though we don't know Rawlings' exact net worth or how much Discovery paid him, we can assume that he doesn't believe it's prudent to criticize Discovery and then get paid $25,000 every time he does. It's also just incredible. Include a language similar to this in your employees' contracts if you are a business owner and don't want former workers to damage your reputation in the community. There, you'll feel safe. But this contract provision made us stop and consider if Discovery had no complaints about Rawlings, would they still include that condition in his contract? Most likely, the response is not in the positive. Sadly, Rawlings is unwilling to share the whole truth and to discuss his time working at Discovery. It seems like a costly tale to tell if he has to pay $25,000 for it. Nevertheless, Rawlings has a lot to say that cannot be ignored. But he's not the only one in the loud, fast-talking bunch who seems to be thinking a lot. Over the course of the show's lengthy run, not all of the criticism was directed on Rawlings and Discovery. Additionally, there was rivalry between Rawlings and the employees. For instance, after a fight between Rawlings and Kaufman, Aaron Kaufman, the show's technician, was let go. Following Rawlings' departure, Kaufman announced his intention to leave, citing personal conflicts with the guy. Remarkably, Kaufman was not the only one who exited the garage belonging to the gas monkey. Tom Smith, Jordan Butler, and Rawlings left the program for personal reasons. Smith has said in the open that the true reason he and Butler left the garage was because someone was there to take pictures with one of Rawlings' vehicles on behalf of an illness supporter. It seems that Rawlings used disparaging language to order the fan to exit his vehicle. Therefore, even if we may be angry with Discovery suits for not always agreeing with Rawlings, it's crucial to remember that Rawlings is far from innocent. What is Rawlings doing now that Quick and Loud is over? He seems to have started the podcast that he promised to do on his Joe Rogan show. He pleased millions of fans on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter with his new podcast, Monkey Trap. He also showed off a $500,000 food truck in Dallas the year before. The van size allows it to serve 10,000 people daily. I hope you enjoy. Stay tuned for the next video.